And of course, none of this matters really. I wouldn't just say trust us. You know, we've we've sort of done this, and uh, the reason you should trust us is because we've done some extensive testing against the current CET, and we've tested flex value TRC outputs and and benefits and cost outputs against the CET. We've looked across. Uh, I have 130 scenarios here. This is you know well over 250 at this point, uh, but these graphs are just showing 130 independent scenarios from some of our initial testing where we were changing the, the load shape that we were incorporating into the calculation, the program administrator, the climate zone, net to gross, EUL, um, savings cost information, everything that we could tweak and change, um, we did. And we have always seen that flex value is reproducing CET outputs to within 3%. Uh, so, we, and I would say, again, you don't have to take my word for it. You don't even have to just believe these graphs. We actually provide a tool that users can simultaneously generate flex value inputs and CET inputs, and then parse those outputs right on the spot and compare them. And we'll cover that uh, later in this presentation. So uh, again, don't take our word for it. We have verified against the CET, you can do the same. And this is why when we then look at these load shapes that we're measuring, we can actually do the cost effectiveness calculation. We, we can value those resources and the dollar value that we are measuring with flex value based on the results of forecasted or even measured hourly load impacts are trustworthy because we're, we've already verified that flex value meets the cost effectiveness tool when we're using the deemed load shapes. Uh, so again, this is just an example of here's the measured load shapes, here's the dollar benefits, and here's what's being claimed uh, with, for this very same program. You know, very, very different. Uh, I'm installing flex value, uh, and then I'm downloading locally these avoided cost data so that we have the information just on hand to go ahead and run these cost effectiveness calculations. Uh, the next cell again is, is pretty similar. You just, you just hit run and it goes and it imports some Python that you need. Uh, finally, uh, this is kind of the main event. So I'm just gonna take a minute to explain what's going on. Um, there are a handful, like I said in, uh, earlier, of inputs that you need in order to run cost effectiveness calculations. Uh, some of these inputs, uh, the sort of nomenclature, the semantics of them differ a little bit between the CET and flex value, although we've tried to keep things where it makes sense pretty common between the two. Um, and what I want to talk about is how you can prepare files simultaneously for flex value and the CET that you can then compare the outputs. And we'll walk through an example of, of how you can do this. Uh, the first thing is just to kind of get oriented toward the information that's here. Now, one of the things I, I want to point out, which is a little bit of a caveat, but it's an important caveat, is one of the issues that the CET has is that it starts the net present value calculation, like the discounting of TRC benefits um, in, at a set fixed point in time, no matter when you actually start your program. So if your program, if you want to use a cost effectiveness tool to start calculating TRC benefits in 2023, you know, quarter four, 2023, or even if you're doing like an ABAL for next year and you're saying, okay, I want to forecast my program and I'm going to have quite a bit of uh, program participation that's occurring in uh, quarter three, 2022, then the net present value calculation in the CET is starting in Q1 2021. And that creates a misalignment. That's actually an issue in the CET. So in order to get an apples to apples comparison between the CET and flex value, uh, because that's not an issue in flex value, we've, we, we don't have that issue in flex value. So the, in order to get an apples to apples comparison, you need to start in 2021. So, you, so we've made that just your program year is 2021. Uh, and now we're, you can change your program admin. So you can be PG, PGE, SCE, or SDGE at this point, depending on your utility. And then you just need to make sure that your climate zones are you know, in that service territory. So right now we have an example set up where you have PGE, you have climate zones 4, 3A, and 11. 
And where you see multiple values here, so like climate zone, megawatt hour therms, et cetera, these are just like different rows in an input file. So this would be like having three rows in an input file, one with climate zone four, the second with 3A, the third with 11, and then the corresponding values for all of the rest of the inputs are all you know, tied together. So you know, the first row in the input file would be climate zone four with 111 megawatt hours, 200 therms, you know, one on the units, not 0.95 for the net to gross, EUL, et cetera. Um, and so that's just true all the way down. And so right now, you know, we have uh, uh, basically three rows. You can expand this. So if you want four rows, five rows, 100 rows, whatever, you can expand this as much as you want. Uh, so let's just, let's just kind of change a few things around. Um, this is, these are just the default settings. So let's go ahead and, and put in, say, climate zone 12. If anybody wants to chime in in the chat and, and give me just kind of a number, say anything between like 100 and, or maybe 50 and 150, then I can, I can include that. But, you know, megawatt hours, let's just pick something, let's say 128.9 um, therms, maybe we'll have, uh, you know, 35 therms for this, for this row. We'll have one unit, we'll stick with that. Net to gross, maybe we can make net to gross 0.48. Uh, the EUL, why don't we go 12 years with the EUL? Uh, and then we have the sector. So you, have, you can choose res or non-res for the sector and then you'll have corresponding load shapes. So if we wanted to do, um, if we wanted to change one of these load shapes, we can do um, DEER HVAC um, efficient AC, which is a res, you know, load shape used for res applications. And then gas sector, we will just, we have residential, I believe you can have like core or commercial. So we'll just change one to commercial, uh, commercial. And then you have gas savings profiles. So you have annual, winter only, summer only. You know, we can, we can change these around if we want. Maybe we'll make, we'll make this one also winter only. And then you have avoided cost information. Um, so, Admin costs, measure costs, incentives. We can change this around as well. So maybe we'll go 2000. Um, let's just pick like 5129 for the measure cost. Incentives a little out of whack here. Maybe we'll, we'll bring this down to say 2047 on the incentives. And then I'm good. I have my parameters set up for the generation of an input file. Now I can go ahead and run this cell and it's going to automatically spit out a the flex value input file. So here's my flex value input file. Um, and it's just now I, I'm, I'm already set up to run the flex value calculation. But the first thing I'm going to do is actually download a automatically generated CET input file based on the parameters that I just gave uh, this notebook. So I've just downloaded a file, it's called test run. And you can see it just in my downloads folder. So here's testrun.zip. Um, and it was just created, you know, 4.29 p.m. I'm on mountain time these days. And now we can go, go ahead and run flex value. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll, we'll run flex value. And while that's going, I'm going to head over to the CET and I'll choose my file. And so I've got test run, the same file I just created, and I'm going to go ahead and, and run the CET. And we'll you know, hold our breath and, and you know, we're, we'll take a look and hopefully we have a successful CET run. Right now it's, it's processing. And I will in a moment be able to download the CET output assuming uh, all of these inputs are kosher. So all the QC was passed, that's a good, good sign. And in a moment here I should have my CET output. And here we are. So I can go ahead and download that. And now you can see that show up in my, um, here's my CET output file that was just downloaded into my downloads folder. So we'll come back to our notebook. And now this, this cell allows you to download the flex value output. I don't necessarily need that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this cell, which will allow me to upload the CET output. So I'm going to choose that file that I just 
uh, just got from the CET. And now everything is basically set up. So now the last, uh, the last cell here will allow me to just get a, this is gonna parse out the CET inputs and outputs um, along with flux value. And we'll see how we did. So first things first, um, you know, I can take a look at my CET versus flux value for each of these measures. So the, me the, the measure that we just developed together here, um, you know, that's, this is the TRC benefits from the CET. Here's the TRC benefits uh, on the electric side um, and then gas benefits. And I have TRC costs. And overall, I can take a look at my TRC uh, CET versus flux value. I'm calculating in the CET 10.66 versus 10.79 in flux value. So I don't know, doing my math, doing math in my head, it's with, within a percent or two. Um, and then pack, same kind of thing. So 14.52 versus 14.70 in flux value. And this is exactly the process you can go through if you want to you know, run scenarios and compare the CET outputs to flux value. And I would definitely invite anybody to do this. And if you find cases where things are wildly off, let us know, uh, we've yet to run into them. Um, but I think, so I think for the most part, you know, we're, we're within 3% virtually every time. If you're, if you're finding stuff, you know, beyond 5%, then definitely let us know. There are some known reasons why the CET may be slightly different than flux value. So like little discrepancies are not of, of big concern at this point. But if, if there are like major discrepancies, then, then we'd like to know. Uh, so anyway, that's how, like I said before, you don't have to take our word for it. You can find out for yourself.